Hello, women of welcome. I am Sarah Casada, and I wanted to spend our time together today talking about something that, at least to me, was a little bit unfamiliar when I first saw um, this phrase popping up in the news as of late, and it's called safe third country agreements. And so I want to talk a little bit about what those are, how they've uh, historically been used, what they are currently being used to do, and how that's impacting families seeking asylum at the U.S. border. So if you're new here and you have some questions about the U.S. asylum process, I really encourage you to check out one of our FAQ videos um, on what is our asylum process that really dives into um, that process, what people are experiencing, and what what the laws are around that. But this is a little bit different, and so you may have heard recently that we have begun deporting asylum seekers to Guatemala who are not Guatemalan. And so the reason that we are doing that is because last year the U.S. Uh, created and signed with Guatemala what's called a safe third country agreement. Okay, so what on earth is that? <laughs> so a safe third country agreement is essentially an agreement between two nations that says um, we can share the load of asylum seekers, and we also want to prevent people from um, making long, dangerous journeys. And so, for context, we have previously only held this agreement with Canada. And so the idea being that if someone arrived in Canada and then moved through Canada and came to the U.S. Uh, seeking asylum in the U.S., that they would be turned back to Canada saying that um, Canada is a safe country. It is a third party country in this instance because the person seeking asylum is not from Canada and they are not seeking asylum in Canada. But we're saying this is a safe third country alternative and you are already, that is closer to you. You have already been there. And so this idea is that you could not necessarily apply for asylum in the U.S. because you had already been in Canada and that was a safe third country alternative. Again, the goal of this was to um, sort of share the, the, um, the asylum seeking process so that other countries were also taking in asylum seekers and to prevent people from making really dangerous trips. Um, and this idea that if you're closer, if you have a closer option that is also safe, that that should be your first option. So that is kind of the history of what a safe third country agreement is. Things changed last year. Um, President Trump um, sought out these types of agreements with um, other countries, including Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. And they, um, those countries were told that if they did not sign a safe third country agreement, that they would be subject to a travel ban, that there would be um, ex excessive tariffs put on some of their imports and exports. Okay, I don't exactly know how <laughs> all of those words work, but it was, it, was, um, it was very clear that there would be economic repercussions on these countries. And just, again, for context, you have to remember Guatemala is about the size of the state of Georgia. Um, and so it's much smaller economies that are really impacted by um, decisions that the U.S. makes. So um, during those negotiations, all three of those countries signed safe third country agreements with the U.S. So what that means now is that if someone arrives at the U.S. border and they have previously passed through Guatemala, for example, they can be deported back to Guatemala because that was a safe third country alternative where they could have applied for asylum. Um, there are some concerns about this arrangement. Um, a lot of asylum seekers are coming from Guatemala. Um, so they are then maybe I don't know. I don't know if they have started deporting to El Salvador and Honduras. I don't think they have yet, though they have those arrangements. But they have started deporting Honduran families to Guatemala, which raises some questions about are they actually safe from the dangers they were fleeing in Honduras with Guatemala being right next door. And um, those, those three countries tend to operate really as a network. And so, um, you know, there's not as much vetting between the borders of those countries because they kind of work together. So, um, so that is one of the concerns, but it also means that anyone coming from 
perhaps South America or any other country is also being deported to these countries in Central America because they've signed these agreements. And so um, I will say that there have also been some reports that Mexican asylum seekers have been deported to Guatemala, which um, really kind of pokes at the purported reasoning for this, especially around the idea that um, that this would be closer for them um, to be deported. Like, because theoretically you could be from a border town in Mexico and then you're being deported to Guatemala. Um, so that's that's also kind of raising some concerns. Let me check my notes here to see if I've missed anything. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can always add those into the into the comments and I'll circle back and answer any that I can. Um, but yeah, essentially it means that migrants cannot pass through Central America to apply for asylum. And because if they do, then they can theoretically be deported back to those countries as a safe third alternative. Um, I think just the last thing I want to say to kind of help clarify, um, you know, it, it is such a reminder to me constantly that the, that the history behind our asylum seeking system was that in our response, when we look back on our role in returning Jews to Europe who had been fleeing persecution and the violence and death that followed for many people, we really made a vow as a country that we would not turn people back to danger and violence um, ever again. And that was kind of what spurred our asylum seeking processes. And now that we're kind of finding ourselves in the situation again, we're seeing how we're we're working to not hear these cases. And so um, I think that's really concerning. But I wanted to give kind of some context of what a safe third country is, um, how it's historically been used with Canada, and then how we're currently using it with Central America. So again, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer anything that I can. Thanks so much for watching.